Welcome to our Midweek Connection. I'm Reverend Art Moore, and I'm the pastor at Centenary United Methodist Church in Louisiana, Missouri, and Clarksville United Methodist Church in Clarksville, Missouri. Well, as you know, all this month, I've been talking about love. This last week of February, I'd like to talk to you about measuring God's love. And our scripture reading today comes from Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And you know, I learned this scripture back when I was a young boy. And it's one that I memorized. And you know, there's so many people that love this verse and they memorize it. And so I'm just going to read it to you today. And maybe you might even want to memorize this verse. John chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, one of my favorite verses begins with, For God so loved the world. I was thinking about that verse, and I was just wondering, just how great is God's love? And how could we measure it? Could you help me out in doing that? What different things do you think that we could use to measure God's love? Well, today, I brought several things that we often use in measuring other things. I thought they might help us measure God's love. Sometimes we use a measuring cup to measure things. If I were making some cookies, and I don't make them by myself, usually I help Diane make them, and I would use a measuring cup like this to make sure that I put in exactly the right amount of flour, and Diane will tell me how many cups of flour to put in there, and I'll put in that one, and I'll fill it again and put in a two and three or however many I need to, and then she tells me how many cups of sugar to put into the bowl. You know, and then once we get everything into that bowl, I get to do the best part of the job, and that's stir it up, stir it up. And then you know, sometimes I even get to stir it up some more, and sometimes I stir so long, my arm gets tired, and then I have to stir it with the other arm. But I wonder if we might use that measuring cup to measure God's love. Well, and the Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 23, verse 1, and then some in verse 5, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then in verse 5, it goes on to say, My cup runneth over. Well, if our cup runs over with God's love, I don't guess we could use it to measuring cup to measure God's love. Maybe if we got a bigger cup, but it, no, it says our cup runs over. And even if we got a gigantic cup to measure God's love, the Bible tells us that his cup runs over. So to measure God's love, we can't use this, can we? God's love is just too great for that. You know, if we were building something, we might use a tape measure. And I brought a tape measure with me today. And we could use it to measure the length, or we could use it to measure the width, or we could use it to measure the height of different things. And we can just go up and up and up with it. You know, I wonder if we might use a tape measure like this to measure God's love. Well, if we go back into the book of Psalms again, and it, the Bible tells us that God's love is higher than the heavens. My goodness, you know how high that is, don't you? Because when we go outside on, on, on a day like today, and we look up into the heavens, into the sky, the heavens are way up there, and we still can't even see it, can it? It's so far up there. You know, if we even went up at night, we know that the stars are up there in the heavens. And you look up at the stars, can you reach up there and grab it? I have never been able to do that easier. You know, so God's love is higher than the heavens even. 
Well, I don't think we could use this tape measure to measure it, could we? You know, we could use a watch to measure time. There are probably some people that use their watch to measure how long a pastor's sermon lasts on Sunday mornings. You gotta be kidding me. Everybody, well, we won't talk about the pastor's sermon anymore. I wonder if we could use a watch to measure how long God's love will last. You know, if we go back in the book of Psalms again and go to Psalm 103, and the Bible tells us that God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. That means it just lasts forever. Wow, can you believe that? Do you think my watch could measure or your watch could measure God's love? Man, if God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, I don't guess we could measure it with a watch, could we? Well, I might as well put it back on because I can't measure God's love with our, my watch. You know, as today's scripture reading says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And we all know what eternal is, don't we? It's forever. How do you measure a love like that? We can't measure it. We don't need to, but we do need to experience God's love. And my prayer today for you is that you will understand how wide, how long, and how high and how deep his love really is. May you experience it, though it is so great that you will never fully understand it. And that comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Well, I would just like to spend a little bit of time with you today in prayer. If we will fold our hands, bow our heads, and close our eyes, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, a love so great that you gave your one and only Son so that we could have eternal life. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this week and the whole month of February as we talked about loving God and others, loving our neighbors, and loving our enemies, and God's love for us. Well, I invite you to join me in March as we talk about springtime and the Lenten season leading up to Easter that comes in April. So, will you have a great week the rest of this week? And may the Lord bless you.